Tak, to ten osoba, to fajnie będzie. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's renew our religion. Let's renew our shahadat. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Renewing the shahadat, we're starting everything from a clean place, from a pure place. Renewing the shahadat gives us more energy, it gives us more purity. The shahadat gives a man a hope for paradise, it gives a man salvation. It makes the one who is in kufr to have Islam and Iman. What about those ones who are not in kufr? If he's already a Muslim, he's already a mu'min. What happens if he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abdu wa rasul? What happens? Nothing happens? Or something worse happens? Or something better must happen? Definitely something better is going to happen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the most generous is giving that much to a man who is in kafir, who is in kufr all his life, that if he says that shahad at one time and he enters into paradise because he's cleaned himself with that shahada, if he happens to die right after that, what about the man who's been saying his shahada all his life? So it is a sunnah of our shaykh to begin everything with the shahada and for us to understand and to give value to the shahada. Our life is because of the shahada. Our death must be for the shah, nothing else. It should not be for this dunya. It should not be for our wives, or our husbands, or our fathers, or our mothers, or our sons, or our daughters, or our groups, or our race, or our countries. No, it has to be first for the shahadat. Anyone who is saying that shahadat, they include it as part of the family, anyone. Anyway. That time we are part of that Jamaat, that time we are part of that Ummat. Because the Ummat must unite under the Shahadat. If it is not uniting under the Shahadat, then there's going to be trouble. The trouble is going to come to those who have not saved the Shahadat. As the trouble is coming to the Jews and to the Christians, we are belonging to the Ummat of the Prophet. Make no mistake. But they are not accepting the shahada. Yes, they may good be good people. They may be people who help others, but their religion it is not complete. It becomes complete only with the shahada. Be with those ones who are living the shahada. Be with those ones who are giving value to the shahada. Be with those ones whose life and whose death is for the shahada. When we are with those ones, then we're going to feel the value of the shahada. When we are with those ones, we're going to taste the shahada. When we are with those ones, our lives will be based on that shahada, not based on dunya, not based on our own small existence, not based on our own little worries, little problems here and there, business, families, this, that, all is garbage. Only the shahada is the most important. So if we are with those ones, it's easy. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets. Every prophet came with that shahada. Every prophet came to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. It is in the time of Adam alayhi salam, Adam Rasulullah. In the time of Nuh alayhi salam to his people, Nuh Rasulullah. In the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim Rasulullah. In the time of Isa alayhi salam, Isa Rasulullah. Every prophet came because of that shahadat and to teach us that shahadat and to teach us how to live that shahadat. And the most perfect creature, the most perfect prophet, the most beloved one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, came with that shahadat that is uniting the whole world now. Not just one group of people or one, 
uh, community or one nation, but all the nations in this world and in reality, all prophets had to take that shahada. The nation is taking the shahada, for example, in the time of Isa alayhi salam, he's saying, say ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah, you will follow me. But Isa alayhi salam, he is the one who is saying, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. He's giving the same shahada that you and I are giving. Understand that this shahadat was only given to 124,000 prophets, not to their ummahs. Understand the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this ummah. Understand the honor that even the prophets they're saying, take this prophethood away from us, Ya Rabbi. We just want to be one of them, one of the simple members of the Ahli, of the ummah of the Muhammad. Don't give us this high honor, Prophet. Who is a simple uh, ahli of this ummah? You, me, anyone. They would rather them give up their prophethood to be like you and me, to say this shahada. 124,000 prophets prayed. But their prayer, their salat, it was not given to their ummah. But the way that they are praying, the way that the Holy Prophet is praying, we are praying. Which is why Holy Prophet is saying, those ones with knowledge, the alims and the ulamas of my nation, not the ulamas as we understand, the alims and the ulamas of these uh, Medina University or Al Azhar University now, or all of these different madrasas. Not those ones with knowledge, that is a Sahiri knowledge, no. Those ones who have ilm al those ones who have the ilm, the knowledge of Allah. Knowledge of Allah is the highest knowledge. Knowledge of the religion, Shariatullah, is just knowledge of the Shariat. They're knowing about the religion, but they're not knowing the Creator. Awliya Allah, those are the inheritors of the Prophets. Those are the ones who are representing the prophets. They are not prophets, but they're given the maqam of the prophets. Those are the ones calling people together. Those are the ones who are changing people's hearts. Those are the ones who is continuing the mission of the prophets. Those are the ones that one prophet saying, the alims of my nation, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. They are like prophets. Prophets of the Bani Israel, able to work miracles, isn't it? Musa alayhi salam, he parted the Red Sea by Allah's permission. Isa alayhi salam, he was able to raise the dead. Count how many miracles they're able to do. The inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, they're able to do more. So, the shahadat, how much value we give to the shahada. How are we going to understand the value of the shahada now? How? People, ignorant, arrogant, foolish people, they're thinking that the religion of Allah, that Allah sent 124,000 prophets down to teach us this shahada, can be just found in a couple of pages of a book. Or just pick up the Quran and read. Read like donkey. Don't even know the meaning. Or read translation. Even if you're Arabic, you think you understand the meaning. That book was written 1400 years ago, correct? It's 1400 years different Arabic. Let me go one step further. Even the Arabs at that time, when they heard the Quran, they hear it differently from you and me. Yes, that is correct. Because when the heart it is open, the secrets comes. It is not through reading of the book. It is not through understanding the language just like that. If it's like that, there's so many Jews and Christians and unbelievers who know Arabic better than you and me. Every university here in America they have a department of Islamic studies, isn't it? They're all filled with Yahudis and Christians. 
They're not Muslims. They read Arabic perfectly. They can give tafsir of the Quran. They can quote you hadith that is going to make your head to spin. But is faith given to them? So, so it is more than just reading the Arabic, the way that the Qasat can recite the Arabic. It is not that. It is still words. There are words. And there are the meaning of the words. Go with those ones who have the meaning of the words. Because in these days, so many pretending to know the words, isn't it? So many are studying to become scholars. Scholars, they're everywhere. The madrasas, the El Azhar University graduates, it's running every country, it's full. Everyone is studying to become a scholar. Everyone is learning. Once they say, oh, I want to be a good Muslim, first thing they say, you have to, to, to read the Quran. Well, oh, 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 never mind, you don't understand, just read the Quran, Barakat. Of course, Barakat is going to come. But understand, you have to go one step further than that. Steps further than that. You can make the parrot to recite the Quran too. You can make person who is unbeliever to recite the Quran too. Is it going to reach to them? It is not. The Quran, it is still a book. But the Quran did not come down as a book. The Quran came down to the Holy Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have just not sent 124,000 prophets. He could have just sent books and papers to everyone. This is Shahada, the way it's written. Read. This is Quran. This is Injil. This is Zabur. Read. This is Torah. Just read. Don't follow any prophet. Don't follow their successors. Don't follow your leaders. Don't follow the men of ilm, of knowledge. The highest knowledge is not the knowledge of books or this world. When Holy Prophet is saying, seek knowledge even if you have to go to China, is not meaning the knowledge of this dunya. Don't get so excited. People are getting so excited about Islamic knowledge, Islamic knowledge. Muslims have the highest knowledge too. Look at Baghdad, uh, look at Shams, look at all these different places. It is still dunya knowledge. It is under our feet. We are not excited about that. Of course you're going to have that. If you have Islam, of course you're going to have the dunya knowledge. But it is the knowledge of Allah that is the highest knowledge. It is the knowledge of Allah to know your Lord. That is the reason of our creation. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we have not created the ins and the jinns and the ins, the man and the jinns, except to know us and to worship us. Because if you don't know Allah, you won't be able to worship. You may know certain words. Of course, everybody can memorize words. Kassad, Parrot, Jew, Christian can memorize words. It is not just going up and down. Anyone can go up and down. It is not just to stay hungry, which so many people, they are doing that in the month of Ramadan. It is not just to give money. So many people are giving money for charity. That is not zakat. It is not just to go on a tour to Mecca and Medina, which in these days is becoming a tour, a vacation. There is no feeling of a pilgrimage that you're leaving this world behind, you're entering the Arafah. It's supposed to be a rehearsal for a judgment day. How is that Arafah going to be a judgment day when you're sitting in the five-star hotel and everywhere it is like a Vegas. They're saying it is like a Vegas. Mecca and Medina is like a Vegas. You're going there for shopping and Kaaba uh, Sharif is down at your feet. They are up in the balcony, praying like this, facing the Kaaba, and they set their feet. What kind of blessing is that going to give to you? Curse is going to come, the Holy Prophet said. He said, what is going to happen? He already told us what is going to happen 1400 years ago. And he said, do this, don't do this. When this happens, pull yourself away. When this happens, go forward. Who has this knowledge now? You think the alims and the ulama of all these different universities, West and East, and now 100% they're chasing in the West, wanted to make what? Islamic universities in the West. What kind of Islamic universities in the West? They're going to breed cafe Muslims. That's what they're going to breed. Maybe in the past, men's and women's, according to basic Sharia, they're going to be separated, they're going to teach. Now, we have to say we are Americans. We have to show the rest of the world. We are so civilized, we are so progressive, doesn't matter we're Muslims or not Muslims. Mix! 
Men and women mix. Take off your hijabs. But learn Islam. Learn hadith. Discuss tafsir. Discuss Quran. Holy subjects, Allahu Alam, if they even have ghusl. What kind of blessing is going to come? You think this religion is a game? You think this religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this ummah through his most beloved one is a game to be played in this ahir zaman? This is the ahir of the ahir zaman. Where are the scholars to wake us up? Where are the leaders to wake us up? We have no halifa. The blood of the Muslims became so cheap every day. People are insulting the Holy Prophet, but what are the Muslims being busy with? What are they being busy with? Are they being warned of the times that we're living in? As Prophet warned us 1400 years ago, he warned us the time will come when this is going to happen. Watch out. So who has the knowledge? Foolish, ignorant, arrogant people saying the knowledge is just in the Quran. Take and read and you'll find safety. Take and read and you'll find safety. That is the most jahil thing a man can ever say, especially in this 21st century. You want to become what? An accountant, a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a mechanic. Why you have to go to school? Why you have to find a teacher? Why you have to graduate? Take the book and read. Take the book and read. You can become a doctor, right? Why not? Why? Why not? Isn't that what they're saying about Islam? You want to find Islam? Take the book and read. It's going to come to you. Then why Allah said, Holy Prophet, you think Allah doesn't know any better? Hasha astaghfirullah. If you're thinking that way, shirk has already entered into your faith. Why Allah then sent prophets to teach men? That book was sent to the prophet. That book was not sent to us. Meaning we have to take that book from that prophet. 124,000 sahabis. It was not given to 124,000 either. And although every sahabi was a light, there are different grades, different stations of the sahabi. Isn't this common sense? This is common sense. You don't have to be a scholar or a saint to understand this. This is common sense because the dunya is supposed to teach you about ahirat. If you look at the dunya, it's supposed to teach you about ahirat. It's going to teach you about your Lord. It's going to teach you about your prophet. You don't have to know Arabic that time because your heart is going to open. But Muslims have fallen into complete gaffes and ignorance and arrogance. You cannot even do that in dunya. You want to become a doctor. Just pick up a book, read. Then get some clothes, doctor's clothes wear, get a couple of knives and make surgery. Why not? Because they're doing that to religion. Read a couple of things, wear a couple of clothes, and then give fatwa. Give fatwa. This is what I think. This is what I think. Everyone think something. Why you don't think something when it comes to medicine? Everyone has a mind, everyone can read, correct? Doctor says, you have this. You're not going to say, well, I have a mind. I don't think it's that. I think it's this. Or the lawyer says, I think you're in trouble because of this. You're not going to fight with the lawyer. Policemen come in and tell you, you got a ticket. You're going to start shivering. But when it comes to religion, the Muslim's mind is so cheap when it comes to that. They think that, no. Just read a couple of ayats. Go up and down. Doesn't matter if your heart. There's not Allah inside. Idols that inside. Yes. You're going to be saved. No. Tariqat. Islam. Holy Prophet is saying, we have returned from the small jihad to the big jihad. He just came back from a war. And the Sahabi Kiram, they have lost their brothers, they have lost their property, they have lost so much for the sake of Allah. And they're saying to the Holy Prophet, I said to Islam, what bigger jihad can there be? Ya Rasulullah. And he says, the jihad against your nafs. Because Holy Prophet, I said to Islam, he has removed the physical idols from the Kaaba. Now it's time to work on the button idols inside of your heart. This heart 
is not yours, it's not for you. You're not supposed to put your car, your children, your wife, your husband, this world inside. You're supposed to put Allah, because that is Allah's seat, that is His chair. Then sit down, simple. Sit down and ask, what is in my heart? You'll be able to ask. Sincerely, you'll be able to ask. Don't lie and don't cheat to yourself. To say, well, Allah is in my heart. Whatever is in your heart, you're going to be busy. Whatever is in your heart, you're going to be busy. Then say, if you're busy with Allah, and remembering Allah, and giving salawats to His Prophet your whole day. Simple, test yourself. I'm testing myself. Wake up. What's the first thing that comes to your mind or your heart? Allah, His Prophet, Islam. <laughs> Before you go to sleep, what are you thinking about? Allah is from this way. But if you are with the people, men of Shahada, if you are with Rijalullah, if you are with those ones, not me, not us, those ones, our sheikhs, that Holy Prophet is saying, there are men, when you look at them, they will remind you of Allah that time. Easy for us then to remember Allah and to give value to that shahada, to taste that faith. Because what they're doing was exactly what 124,000 prophets they did. You think prophets did not have enough sense and intelligence to just gather people, give the shahada, give them a book, throw it to them, and say, Now, Yallah. Why they go and around the prophet? Why they stuck with the prophet? Why they were with the prophet? It was for 23 years, they did not go away from him. Then when he passed, so many thought, now is our chance. Because they took that shahadat also with insincerity, with different intentions. Blessings come because of the shahadat, but the intentions are going to show after the Holy Prophet passed. So many took because they're saying, Islam is winning. Let me take it. Maybe there's something in it for me. So when Holy Prophet passed, they're saying, well, I'm connected to the Prophet, I'm not connected to Abu Bakr or Umar Usman or Ali. Or they say, now the Prophet passed, so everyone is independent, we can do as we like. We are all independent, we all got something from Prophet. So, Prophet did not openly say, <laughs> he did not openly say, yeah, Hazrat Abu Bakr is going to be my successor. Although there were signs, there were open signs, but he did not openly say. But those ones who have wrong intentions is going to show, and it did, it showed. Not only they pulled away, they declared themselves prophets, they made a fitna, but they came back to destroy the work of that prophet. And the Sabe Kiram held together, only still a few understand now, understand now especially people who are so uh, proud and impressed by the Arabs. What happened? What happened to them? Prophet was sent to their race, from their race to the rest of the world. The, the Chinese or the Pakistanis or the Africans <laughs> or any other race betray him right after he passed, or his own people. Who hunted down his grandchildren to kill them? Chinese people. Yes. So, we have to know our history. They are on top of our heads. Of course they are, because they belong to a noble race. They are on top of our heads as long as they hold on to Islam, as long as they hold on to the Sharia of the Prophet ﷺ. Once they deviate out of the way, all bets are off. It's finished. It's done. Same thing with the Turks. Why are you being so proud to be Turkish? Nothing to be proud of. But when you were Ottomans, if we were Ottomans, then that time the whole world was under our feet and Prophet put the Ottomans high. Once you leave the way of Allah and His Prophet and those ones who say, we don't want to be Ottomans, we want to be Turks, Turkish. Nationalism, yeah, mashallah. Allah dishonors them as Allah has dishonored this nation. 
Because we're no longer one single ummah. We become what? Separate. Separated. Don't you see? Why you want to be separated? Don't you understand? With separation comes the lanat. We were together one ummah. But it is not one ummah as people are imagining. One ummah has to speak only Arabic, everyone. Dress completely Arabic, no. Because that is not the way of the Prophet. Allah creates us in different tribes for us to meet each other and to know each other. And everyone must be given their rights and their stations. The Prophet did that. Alhamdulillah, the Ottomans did that. That's why Allah held them high. Prophet held them high. It is not about race. It is not about nationalism. They did not even change anyone's language. They did not even say to the Christians and the Jews living in their land, destroy all their worship houses and for them to become Muslims. They gave everyone their right. So where is that unity? The unity is gone. Because the unity has to be according to the way that Allah and His Prophet wants. The unity has to be the shahadat. The shahadat that the Prophet came with. The shahadat that the sahaba kiram carried with them. The shahadat that the tabi, tabi, tabiins. And those ones continuing. 1400 years, awliya Allah still today continuing, holding on to that real shahadat. Those are the ones calling for unity. If you're not agreeing to that shahadat, lakum dinukum waliyakti. Islam is going to be divided into 73. It is already divided into 73 different groups. But only one of them is in the way of Siratul Mustaqim. One, Holy Prophet is saying, 72, they're bounding to hellfire. He didn't leave it open for anyone to guess and to say and to interpret. They asked him, which group is that, Ya Rasulullah? You want anything clearer than this? And he said, those who follow my sunnah. He did not stop there. Because now everyone is saying, I'm following Sunnah. I'm following Sunnah. Shia is saying, I'm following Sunnah. Khadiji is saying, I'm following Sunnah. Wahhabi is saying, I'm following Sunnah. Secular Muslims saying, I'm following Sunnah. Feminist Muslims who want the women to become the Imam saying, I'm following Sunnah. Everyone is following Sunnah. Everyone is following Sunnah according to their ego. And that is forbidden. Because there is no head. There is no Khalifa. Khalifa comes with a sword to say, you're out of your way. Finish. Finish. Prophet said, those who follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my sahabis. Meaning there is a protocol. So many people today, they may not follow Islam properly, but they still have very strict traditions. Isn't it? Strict traditions with groups, their own nationalities, their own families. Very strict. Very strict protocol cannot deviate from it. You think Islam doesn't have a protocol? Which is higher? The sense of family protocol or the protocol that Allah and His prophets put? Or when it comes to religion, everyone is taking it for a joke. It's so easy. Just do whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Read whatever you want. Live however you like. And you're going to go to paradise. MashaAllah. That is what Holy Prophet did. That is what all the sahib kirams that they spilled their blood for you and for me to have Islam. That's what they did. <laughs> that's why they said, that's why Holy Prophet said, if they say to Islam, Kiram, if you see their Islam, you're going to call them kafir. You and me, Islam Kiram is going to call us kafir. Holy Prophet is saying. And if we see their Islam, we're going to say that they are crazy. So, good news. Those of us that's been called crazy, because of following the way of our Shaykh Sayyid Sayyid Shabit Kamisya Rabbani, you have a good news, you have a title at that time, you have faith. If they say, oh, you are normal, you are every day, you are, and people love you everywhere, then you still haven't earned that title yet. In these days, you have to be crazy to have faith, you have to be crazy, and you have to be strange. But, Holy Prophet is saying, Islam began strange and it will end strange. So, welcome my salams to the strangers. We are nobody. We are nothing. We remember where we came from. We remember where, which jungle we created.
creep out from. We remember how our Shaykh held us. Why he should hold us? Why he should take us? Why he should save us? Allah Allah. We know we know good for nothing. But it took us and he cleaned us. And he gave us honor. And he gave us Islam. Because his job is the job of the prophets. The prophet's job is to bring the light of Islam everywhere. And to wake people up. This is Tariq. And now he's veiled from this world. He's saying, now you have to continue. Just as Holy Prophet والسلام, he was veiled from this world. And Sahabi Kiram, they had to continue. Inshallah Rahman, we are not worth the work, of course, but we have to continue. We have to continue because the time is running. The time is at the end, at the end of the end. Big, heavy punishment is going to come to this nation. This nation, a huge punishment is going to happen. If they're still not waking up, then at that time, not too much safety that we are going to see here or here. First punishment is going to come to this nation. Later, to the Jews and the Christians. Yes. Because Muslims were being completely uh, selfish and egoistic. We're losing the compass. We don't know why we're being born. We don't know why we die. We don't know why we're living for. You ask, they say, well, to get a job, to earn money, to buy a car, to get married, to have children, and to die. If life is just to be born, to eat and to drink and to marry and to die, animals do that. Not mankind who has been created in Ahsani Thakwi, in the most perfect form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, who have created man in Ahsani Thakwi. Sit down and think. Think. Islam, Tarikat is giving you an order, ordering you to think. Do I fit into the station of Ahsani the most perfect form. What is stopping you? You are going to see. Your station is still Ahsan That is what Allah has prepared us for. That's what He has sent prophets and saints to clean us and to return to Him in Ahsan If we are not cleaned before we pass from this world, disaster is going to happen to us in the grave. They must clean us. If that's not enough, judgment day. If that is not enough, complete disaster in the fire. We have no choice. You may say, I'm a good person. I don't do anything. I don't cheat. I don't lie. I don't kill. Because you don't have power, that's all. If you have power, see how much you're going to lie. How much you're going to cheat. How much you're going to steal. How much you're going to kill. To keep this dunya in your hands. Don't say that. You still have anger in your heart? Who can say you do not have anger? <laughs> the man who still has anger in his heart, the smell of Jannah which is forbidden to him. So, don't say, don't think this game is, this religion is a game. It's so easy. I just say Shahada just like that. I go up and down just like that. I stay away from food and water just like that. And the highest paradise is is going to open up for me. I learn a couple of ayahs just like that. I memorize a couple of verses just like that. I learn how to argue just like that. And I'm a saint. I'm a high, holy person. Tariqat. Who has tariqat in this case? Who is teaching tariqat in this case? In the old days, they say, well, if you've finished all the scholarly knowledge, then you're going to throw that. Then you're going to enter into tariqat. These days, they enter into tariqat to learn alif Allah. So yes, be with those ones who have the shahadat, our shaykh does, we do not. That time they're going to remind us, you and me, it's still here, it's here, it is there. All of us, we were in divine presence, it's here. All of us, we were in paradise. All of us, 
We were there in pre-eternity and we witnessed everything. It is here. And the Allah and the prophets, they came for us to remove the veils that preventing us to remember. To smell our original home. This is not our home. That is their job. Allah is saying, be a jamaat, be with the salih. Because he said, your beginning is from me, you are going to return to me. How are we going to return, whether the easy way or the hard way? That is up to us. Inshallah, Rahman may be easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant high and high stations to our Prophet and to our Sultan al awliya to our Shaykh. May we stay in the Sirat al Mustaqim uh, stronger and may weakness move away uh, from us for the fitna to move away from us and for this Ummah to wake up for people to understand as much as they are capable of doing uh, to have the Islam and the love of Allah to follow this way as much as they are capable of doing this is not the way that you, when you enter suddenly we are going to say you have to do this you have to drop this no no slowly a patient who is sick comes to a hospital, first treatment, second treatment, third treatment, slowly the medicine is given to them because they believe that they are sick and they want to get cured. Those who want to get cured, it is a sunnah to the Prophet because Islam came in 23 years, not in one day. These days, the person comes to Islam, especially the Wahhabi kind of Islam, they're good, go, become a Wahhabi Muslim. Wahhabi kind of Islam, they say, okay, now brother, you have to pray five times a day, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And they even go to their house to wake them up at Fajr time. Brother, get up, get up now. You're a Muslim. First day, second day, third day. Fourth day, the man beat Islam. <laughs> it's too much. I cannot carry it. So, according to their sincerity, not so much of what you're doing, but the sincerity that you're doing. Maybe you're doing only a little bit. But because of their sincerity, Allah loves the sincere ones. The safety and the highest stations will open up to you. In these days, great big news, good news is also given to us. Because Holy Prophet is saying in the Ahir Zaman, if you revive one of my forgotten sunnahs, just one, you're given the rewards, the sawab of 50 martyrs, 50 shuhada of that time, of the sahabi kira. A tasbih, it is a sunnah. A miswak, it is a sunnah. Their physical sunnah, a turban, to wear baggy clothes, their jubba, a haidaria, all this outside to keep a beard, to keep a mustache and a beard, not just to keep a beard without the mustache looking like a monkey. No, that is a sunnah of the Jews and the Christians. To keep the full beard and the full uh, mustache. But not only that, the sunnahs that you are going to uh, take and you're going to live, that is the manners manners of the Holy Prophet one of them we carry in, get the reward of 50 martyrs, that good news is given to us. So the time is still open for us to collect as much as we can, because the time of confusion, it is here, it's going to get worse, we will not be able to know all the signs, that Jal is going to change the signs, he's going to change the signs, the signs that says no exit, he's going to say exit here. The signs that says, do not detour, do not turn, it's going to say turn here. The sign that says, no exit, it says exit. The sign that says exit, it says no exit. Everything will be upside down. This is the time that we're living in. Be very careful, it's going to get worse. If you lose in this time, if you're tricked by the jolly and you start following him, dunya and akhirat, you'll be lost forever. May Allah protect us from that. The tricks and the traps of the Dajjal is not something which is light. Nobody talks about it, of course. No scholar is interested. No sheikh is talking about it. They're not interested in it. Why? Because we're living in paradise, right? MashaAllah. But we have to be smart, go to college to understand we're living in hell right now. We poison this whole planet. We poison people. We're fighting wars. We're killing each other. We're killing each other day and night. There's no peace. 
and they're not concentrating why we're living the time of Dajjaliyat. We're living in this time, what we have to do, because Holy Prophet is saying the test of Dajjaliyat is so heavy, he's going to test the prophets in their graves. Yeah. The signs, they have changed. The people, they have changed. Those who have the microphone, those who have the podium, those who have the uh, attention, they're leading the Ummah to a completely different direction. Those who are sincere, Allah is going to reach them, will pull them, inshallah. May we always remain in safety and understand that we are living in the time of ignorance, of jahiliya, times of trouble, times of the Dajjal, and to prepare and to cut ourselves away from that confusion and that evil. Because when it comes to Mahdi al everyone talks about Mahdi al But when it's talking about why Mahdi came, because Dajjal is here, everyone is silent. Maybe they're under the payroll of Dajjal. Istaghfirullah alayhi wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you for the sake of the Shaykh, for the sake of the Prophet alayhi wa ta'ala. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come closer. Now, there's a couple of words <coughs> that is necessary.